Wherever you are, I want you to make a prayer to the Holy Ghost tonight. The cry I want you to say to the Holy Ghost is that, Holy Spirit, I've heard how you make use of nothing. I've heard that you can make use of nothing. I bring my nothing tonight. Please make use of it. I bring my nothing tonight. Please make use of it. I bring my empty vessel tonight. Please make use of it. Can you make it a cry? Can you make it a cry? Can you make it a cry? On your majula munda love, fena una no cha love na mota. Ovi na mota fena husayo. Oli na goda no magwe ne loa. Feli ano mano vai. Eri ana moja fena huyo. Eti eleme na vona huta lamu. Adule mona vele na uso yo Na kwela mona nwe jila o Iyo koko na mona uyo lo Na mena vela lo la uja na vende Ebre na vwale la uja no yo Feri ano manuali Ujina na lo la vila lo na moka yo Ebre sa vena ulo Kegwe la mona vena mota la u Marie, Marie, Marie lo Shebre na muka vena muta luta lo me Efe tu na muka vela muna cho Odia no ma kufe la la ule lo lo Efe le me muka tele Efe la mota li veni Uria na ano ne le le if you are no salova na no kai, ona no kai na me da vela o. Ori alo le le le, usana no ne na nu dale, usana mu da fe na nu valole. I vow that you made use of nothing. I bring my judgment that you make use of me. Ori alo na ni. If you turn on a match and a phone, or you are on a fit and no bell a phone, it's all on my own. You can go, it's all on. What I know, if you know, if you know, if you know, it's all on. If you know, did I? If you not allow me to go tell it, I'm not telling you. Oh, say you're telling. We don't know. Go, go, go. He o go, go. He o go, go. He a la 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 la. Have you no love? Messiah, let me let the night hold over. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Have you no man today? Offer the lakuta the night hold over. Let the blind eyes see. Let the deaf ears be open, and let the lame walk. Oh, say no man go keve. I want to be not alone. If I'm not with you. Abra teve kuna kake kuna hile dote no. Esse lavani abra huve na na kavio. Heve na na munato etano. Hi, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Jesus, fill this temple with your presence. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. Ah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Jesus, fill this temple with your presence. We wait on you, Lord. We wait on you. We wait on you, oh, oh Lord. We wait on you. 
I wait on you. Oh Lord, I wait on you. Oh. I wait on you. Oh. Oh. oh, oh, oh. I wait on you, oh, oh Lord, I wait on you. I wait on you, oh, I'll keep on waiting, I'll keep on waiting. Emmanuel waits on you, oh, oh Lord, I wait on you, oh, I wait on you, oh, I'm going nowhere, oh. oh, oh. I'm staying with you, oh, Holy Ghost, Angel and Mokai. I wait on you, oh, oh, oh. Et salamok, bin anadwan. Et amori, et via loka lova anadakua. Et vre te gwele mo, Angelel. Achille lo 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 E fiete quelle monaca E tirao e quelle moda velo E fiele ne tona godo A fioca a fioco coco O se la bacuta la le E ti atamo na do a tamen a via lo lo coco E se lo te come amore a fiele, orieto da buon amore. I wait on you, oh. Oh Lord, I wait on you, oh. I wait on you, oh Lord. I wait on you. Oh Lord, I wait on you. I wait on you, oh Lord, I wait. Oh, speak from your heavens, and this heart will burn. Oh, speak from your heavens, and Emmanuel will hear your voice. Oh, speak, oh, and my whole life. My whole life we born. Oh, speak from your heavens. We na no na need it. We valole la guta e. Heavy na no na velu na na ne. Na no na na ne. Na no na na ne. Oh, iya do ya e da e. E ya ya ya. Oh, oh, oh. Iya ya ya. Oh, ya ya. Oh, ya ya ya. Oh, ya ya ya. We ka go le le le. La lo le 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 le. We na mo be 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 na. We na go ke le 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 le. I don't na me na follow la di le. I don't na fe na no. I don't na da kate le. I feel la mute le. I don't ka go ke le. I don't na do de le. I feel lo. I feel lo. I feel lo. I do. I do. I do. Le 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 le. I go 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 go. I do la lo le. I don't know ne. I feel lo. I don't na e. I don't na ko. I feel te. I do lo. Angelo, if you tell her today, you tell her, Angelo. Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, oh, hey ya, oh. Hey, ya, oh.
Take your place. 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 You are the Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. He's the Holy Ghost. He's the Holy Ghost. You are 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 the Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is set to change our lives forever. God is set to do a new thing in our lives. Tonight, everything you will take, everything you will touch, everything you will assess in God is at the mercy of your alignment. If your heart can conceive it, you will possess it. Nothing is impossible in the presence of God tonight. Everything is possible. In, in fact, in fact, for those of us who wandered into this place, your first labor tonight is to develop an expectation so that you will not, you will not just be in the midst of a galore of visitation and because there was no particular expectation to isolate a visit for you, you will miss that encounter. Take one minute wherever you are and begin to articulate your expectations. Tell the Lord exactly what you want him to do. He told Moses, he says, tell my people that I will do what I hear them say. I will do what I hear them say. You may be seated. God bless you. There are many erudite ministers of the gospel here present, and it is such a privilege to share fellowship with you. Today happens to be the last Anakazo contact in this hall. By the grace of God, on Sunday, we'll be converging in a much larger, much excellent space of worship at Banawa Jari. Who is excited? My job tonight is that of a way maker. My job tonight is to create a path so that the vessel God has burdened for the night will come up and lead us to the spiritual pedestal that God will have us fellowship. Before I bring him up, 
something has been brought before my attention. Something has been put upon my heart as a weight. I've observed that it is almost as though Jesus did not visit. I've observed that it is almost as though Jesus never showed up. Before the coming of Jesus, there was religion. Before the coming of Jesus, there was temple. Before the coming of Jesus, there were sacrifices going on in temples. So there was religion already on ground. It's only unfortunate that after the coming of Jesus, there was a flame that was supposed to spark eternally, but somehow religion extinguished that flame and we went back from spirituality to religion. Before the coming of Jesus, we had all kinds of rituals, all kinds of rites, all kinds of hallowed postures that men will enter just for the sake of, you know, um, the aggrandizement of men and the recognition of men. But when I check the pages of the scripture, especially those written in red, everything Jesus warned us about has become our normal way of life in the church. When I look upon these things, it becomes a heavy weight upon my soul because it is obvious that the visit and the coming of Jesus we have obliterated the encounters that should follow suit. And everything we are doing is the way of the ancient, which is the way of religion. It will interest you to know that the greatest resistance to the ministry of Jesus was not Satan, it's religion. It is the religious sect, the religious organization, the religious bodies, and the leaders pioneering various religious expression. They were the ones that had the biggest challenge with Jesus. And when Satan wanted to finally put a, a, a stop to the agenda of God that he perceived he was going to stop, he made use of the most available tool, the religious people. Because they were the ones that were most poised against the agenda of God. Today, there is an emphasis, a wake-up call in the spirit, a call for all the sons of Adam that seek to truly touch something real with God. People who don't want to know him by the pages of the book. You know, we are so satisfied. You have never seen him since the day you gave your life to Jesus and you are probably 18 years in Christ. You have never heard his voice. He has never appeared to you and it's not a challenge to you because religion has satisfied you. Nothing leads, no whisper, no soft echo of his counsel in your heart. The only thing you know about him was what somebody told you about him. Not even the Holy Ghost can counsel you. Religion had arrested the day. I saw something that got me so worried and I want to cast the same burden upon you. I saw that before the coming of Jesus, there was prayer. Very valid prayer on ground. People were praying. But when Jesus came, there was another type of prayer that he had that made the disciple to submit and say, teach us how to pray. In other words, there are all kinds of prayers that were going on, but we have seen that your own is different. Part of the things that stands out from Jesus' priesthood was that he related with God as a father, not a master. So he was one of the only few that looked up to the heaven and said, Father. Meaning that when Jesus was praying, prayer was not labor for Jesus. Prayer was conversation. Have you ever gisted with your father and when, when two of you are gisting, you are looking at the time and say, I've gisted for one hour. If it is just in time will no longer be a challenge. The reason why prayer has become so worrisome, so burdensome, is because religion has entered it. It has become a work, something to be done. So Jesus' style of prayer made prayer a conversation. So when he's about to talk to the Father, see how he starts. Jesus didn't say in Jesus' name. I hope you know that. <laughs> Jesus starts as though God is always hearing him. As though all the time God's ear is by his lip. He just starts by saying, I thank you, Father, because you always hear me. Saborai Kabani Nagode Cheto I refuse to walk in religion. I refuse it. I refuse it. I refuse it. I refuse it. It's a spirit. See, you will be in church. You will be in church from January to December. No, no potent encounter. Nothing that can shift your season. 
we will just be massaging our ego between management all kinds of people who are plagued by different spiritual infirmities are still the person who is on that loss is still on that loss from january till december by december he will say i thank god for two weeks now i have not fallen for two weeks for two weeks whosoever is born of god cannot sin that's what the bible said now we are doing management we are managing sin we are managing the people's issues the masturbator is still a masturbator the fornicator is still a fornicator every miracle service the same thing you are delivered from last month you still come out from Walk on zero because what this is the objective of religion is to have a form of godliness but to deny the power thereof religion is to remove the power content of the gospel so that all you have is a is a multiple assortment of routines say i refuse religion I fight it with passion. You will contend this night for something authentic, something real, something genuine, something true. You see, it is only spirituality that will validate the claims of the scripture. Because if it's religion you have, you will have stories in your head. It is spirituality that will give you practical expression of the things that were contained in this book. It is spirituality that will make you a conduit of this reality. If not, in religion, you will cram many Bible verses, but your life will be far from those expressions. Now we say miracle service. Look whether you see any cripple here. Look. Check whether any person came here with wheelchair because they are so sure that they will not be healed. This is what the church has become. Let this truly trouble your heart. Let it trouble your heart. I would single into the aspect of prayer so that this burden can come upon you. But it cuts across many expressions. But let me single into the aspect of prayer. Then I'll bring God's choice servant up. Very quickly, in Ezekiel chapter 37, from verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 37, from verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. Next verse, quickly. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. Next verse. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou no, yes. Verse 4, quickly. And he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. If you are with me so far, say amen. amen. Look at me. I need your attention. I want to show you something. Everything happening before the manifestation of the Christus, it was men routing everything to God complaining to God, reporting Satan to God, challenging things in, in, in that context that God is in control. But when Jesus showed up, he brought us into a new layer of fraternity. Meaning now that God does not need to show up. You are the only God some people will ever see. And so when Jesus is addressing matters, he was speaking to mountains. He was not calling God to address mountains. Jesus says, if you can say unto this mountain. is Jesus say, you challenge the mountain. See what the prophet did there. He says, can these bones live? God was testing a man. The man said, only you know, O God. See what God told the man. God says, and thus says the Lord God unto, and he said unto me, he says, prophesy upon these dry bones. What is the utterance of that prophecy? He says, say unto the dry bones. O ye dry bones. So you speak to the challenge. You don't, you don't, there's, you can spend five hours. All you are doing is complaining about the challenge and you have not addressed it. And the challenge will know that you don't know your standing. Because the endless expectation of creation, they are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. When a son shows up, he knows that he has inheritance. He knows that he is entitled to wield the powers of the kingdom. So he addresses matters. He does not report matters to God. There are many people that came here today and their prayer point is, Lord, deliver me. 
you have not spoken to the mountain yet. Oh. Till you finish this meeting and go, you and the mountain has not met. The day that thing will submit is when you and the mountain confront each other. It is on that day you carry the word of God to the mountain. So, oh ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. What is that dry bone in your own life? Maybe your own is, is a surge of delay. It has kept you bound in a particular season for long. What you are doing is you are confronting that delay with the word of the Lord. So, you will identify the mountain first. Say unto this mountain, this mountain. What is the mountain? You cannot be vague about these things. You must define it. Then you confront it. Oh ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Somebody will say sick, sick body. Oh sick body, hear the word of of the Lord because now you have identified the mountain now you are speaking to the mountain you are not just roll, roaming around the mountain and say Lord deliver deliver from what actually let me share something with you so you know what is going on now it's too clear the operations in priesthood as long as Jesus was in the world he's the light of the world and that light was supposed to shine in darkness and the darkness will comprehend it not but the moment Jesus was leaving the stage he committed and delegated that authority of light to us. So he say, yea, at the light of the world. Imagine light came before darkness and light is saying, Lord, shine. And you are the light. It is you that would, the moment from your lip, that situation that has kept you down, that situation that has frustrated you, the moment from that lip of frustration, you speak as a son. Suddenly, all the angels of God are put under pressure to carry out that instruction. It is not the Holy Spirit that works. The Holy Spirit is the administrator of the powers of heaven. The Holy Spirit is the one that powers your utterance and inspires you to pray according to the will of God. But it is angels that carry out those instructions. He says, are they not ministering spirits sent to minister unto us who will be the heirs of salvation? So every instruction, every command, every decree by a son of God, it is angels that carry it out. Even when Moses struck the Red Sea. It was the angels of God that parted the way through. The, you see, there are many times you will need to understand that you cannot command the Holy Ghost. The only thing you can do is to find partnership with him much that you can vocalize his will part time. The moment you speak, there are multiple assortments and companies of angels that carry out your decree. And if you are a man here that talks too much, you, you don't have the prerequisite consecration to command power. Because a man whose lip is and tongue is not bridled, he will, he will be a wastage, a, an abuser of power. Because you cannot say to the angel it was a mistake. That's what the Bible said. Because as you said it, work has started. Ah, we have a father here with us. We have a father here with us. God will have to forgive us for the omission. And a castle with Jesus' joy, with a round of applause, a standing ovation. Let's welcome Pastor Musa. He's in our midst. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Please. Thank you so much, sir. Sir, please, your seat is at the front. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Come on, celebrate him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 very quickly. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Everybody I think we should read this scripture together so that it will, it, it, it will make some very strong points for us. One, two, go. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God. I want to show you a few words there. The Bible says, be careful for nothing. It says, but in everything. Please, tell yourself, ev everything. The only way you can be praying to God about everything is if prayer becomes a conversation. But at best, the only, the only arrangement for prayer in religion is a walk. And many people... I say this with all level of humility and with a love for my brothers and sisters in the body. 
many people are boasting about the labor of prayer. It is, it is too far from the truth. If prayer becomes laborious, if prayer becomes laborious, at some point the energy of the flesh will start finding expression and men will boast with it. And if prayer becomes laborious, it means that you don't enjoy intimacy with God. It means that prayer is not powered by intimacy because there is no day you gist with your lover if you, are, if you are in a relationship or you are married. There's no time you and your wife are gisting, then you now say, this gist is, is okay, we have gisted for one hour, 30 minutes. Meanwhile, the relationship between you and God is a marriage relationship. I want it to settle. I want it to register. There's no intimacy, no contact. That's why we now come and then it becomes so laborious and then we create a doctrine around it to talk about it like it is. He says, for thy maker is thy husband. Please, I know the, the guys and the men here will not like to read it, but let's read it, everybody, at the count of two. One, two, go. Now, don't say die. Say my. So, so that it will make sense. One, two, go. For my maker is my husband. It's my husband. It's my husband. Is it making sense now? Religion has attacked us badly. Badly. But the life, the real organic essence of spirituality has been removed. So we have many charades and activity that are not spirit powered. Help us, Lord Jesus. Matthew, very quickly. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. I'm rounding up now, but I want these things to set. I'll be reading from verse 5 to 8, so you follow me and we'll read as quick as possible. From verse 5, let's read together. One, two, go. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. You see, if this was in the pages of the Bible, hard print, you see written in red. This is Jesus' teaching on prayer. If Jesus says something and another person says something, I will believe what Jesus has said against any other opinion. Next verse. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee open. The emphasis of this scripture is not about hiding. It's about the depth of prayer. It must be done from a more personal place. It's not about shouting. It's not about appearances. He says, remember the first, the appearance and the method of the Pharisee. They love to pray standing. So they have a posture of prayer. If you are, if you are not looking like that when you are praying, they say you are... <laughs> I want to say it again. Let it drive down to the place you're supposed to get to. There are people here enjoying intimacy and fellowship when you are praying, but because you saw one brother by your side twisting himself before he prays, then you, you feel like you need to trust God for the grace to pray that you have not started. Some people will be praying already for one hour. A brother will come up and carry the mic and say, now, let's start praying. <laughs> So, in other words, it's now we want to start. And then he enters a masculine expression of tongue. All those things, they are the living of the Pharisees. Because Jesus says, there is a way they pray. And their whole motive is so that they may be seen of men. You see, this thing started from, we want to learn, we teach us how to pray. Teach us. So, to teach how to pray, we first have to start from how not to pray. And this is how not to pray it started from. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which says in secret shall reward you open. Next verse, let me show you something very quickly. Everybody, let's read together. When ye pray, use not vain repetitions. Please say vain repetitions. There are people here already waiting for the prayer point in this particular miracle service so that they can begin to say, Father, every spirit of delay, I bind. Every spirit of delay, I bind. Every spirit of delay, I bind. You see, when you do that, you are not different from a heathen that does not have relationship with his God. God is saying, I need you to know that my ears are very close to your lips part time. So, before you even started praying, I have known what you are in need of. 
You see, not too many people will accept this gospel I'm sharing with you. But if you embrace it, you will have a rich and robust and a very fruitful prayer enterprise with God. How can you come to pray to a God that you are not conscious that he's listening to you? All kinds of doubt, all kinds of unbelief. See, but when you pray, use not vain repetition as the hidden do. For they think that in, they think that they shall be heard for they are much speaking. They think that it is because of how long that they spoke that they will be heard. This, see, I, I wish I was opening a hard print. You see, it's in red. This is Jesus' lecture on prayer. Jesus was emphasizing that you may pray for seven hours and you have wasted time. You may pray for seven hours and you did not pray to Father. You didn't even want, because prayer starts from our Father. So if you are not born again, you are not entitled to pray. If it's not your father, you are wasting time. Evil heart. Bitter heart. Yet they are praying. <laughs> no result. Yet they are praying. They now find all other ways to, to, to explain why there's no result. As saying, you know, something is process. Maybe God, sometimes God say no. Sometimes there's no need. No need for all this drama. The first requirement for prayer is he must be your father. You must be born again. Let me show us where I was heading to so that we can finally cap it up. Verse 8. Everybody, let's read together. One, two, go. Those things that you have need of before you ask him. Finally, Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Mark chapter 11 verse 24 you see this is why nobody will return back the same way they came because if you follow this particular requirement of prayer you must touch results see what the bible says in Mark chapter 11 verse 24 it says therefore I say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them So the criteria to receive something, the criteria to have something is to believe that you have received it. And if as you are praying, you have not believed yet that you have received it, you will tarry until you believe. And it means the man who can believe in one minute will receive in one minute and go. And you are not permitted to stop praying until you believe. <laughs> so the prayer for you is to build your own faith. Is until faith is dead. When you have that victory note, then you can stop. Amen? Amen. This is the balance as regarding duration in prayer. You pray until you believe. <laughs> if me, if me as I say, in the name of Jesus, and I, my own connectivity is like Jesus, and I can just say, I thank you because you always hear me. You see, J Jesus didn't pray two times for Lazarus to be to resurrect. I thank you because you always hear me when I call. If, if that faith is already powered, the moment you believe, leave that scripture, maybe they will see something. He said, therefore I say unto you that whatsoever things ye desire when ye pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. If you can believe that you have received it, you will have it. That's what Jesus says. I don't know what you are going to ask God for this night, but there is need for you to believe that you have received it. If, if not, all you'll be doing is shouting amen from service to service. And there is no performance. Prayer must be maximized. Prayer remains the most powerful tool between God and man. And so we must set the coordinates right so that men can touch valid results in God. Take one minute wherever you are now. In the light of what we have shared, in the light of all we have shared, Ask the Lord, ask the Lord, ask the Lord. You see, I can gist, I can gist with the Holy Ghost for 24 hours. Because constantly I, I hear his meditations in my heart. And that is me praying for 24 hours. 24, I, I can be at work and I'll be praying. So that's the only way to pray without season. That's the only way it's possible because... It must be so deep. It must not be time-based. It must not be location-based. It should be an, an encounter 
that transcends time, that transcends space. It's a conversation. It's a gist between lovers. I tell him about everything. I tell him about everything. You can pray for 24 hours. If only you can go from religion and enter into a fraternity, an intimate intercourse, where it is better out of intimacy. Listen, listen. The proof of the things I'm sharing with you are the things I have put to test and withdrew results from. Results. I have learned the way of labor in prayer. I've also learned the way of intimacy, and I prefer intimacy. I discovered that in intimacy, that's the first time the right arrangement for prayer was was on ground it was never designed to be laborious it will truly have a lot of comma when prayer for you is a duty and the only way it will not be a duty if it is if it becomes a point where lovers meet where where deliberations happen and in prayer you are not the only one that talk the other spirit you are communing with must also have his opinion on the matters you are tabling before him so while praying there's a point of prayer where you too will be receiving download. Understanding will be coming as you are praying. This is why prayer must be deep first before it becomes loud. You know, my life has become a, a conduit, a conduit of possibilities. The matters that attempted to mold my realities from birth every one of them have been obliterated by prayer every one of them and it is because i have i have embraced it as an intimate connection now i have found out that for some time now the lord has made my life a conduit people can be praying for things for years i share a testimony with you guys some of you are my witness about what i want to share now a, a person was somewhere in europe traveled there for the past seven years seven years no job for seven years struggling for seven years called me crying one morning and say there is already frustration setting in is this how i'll continue this is this supposed to be an escape from you know things that are not working to a place that had so much promise no job for seven years go out search nothing for seven years she spoke and i realized that there is so much boldness you walk in if prayer is a perpetual continuum in your life. Because part time you are conscious of his presence. That's what prayer secures for you. Because you are always gisting with him. That's the only way you can pray without season. It means part time you'll be gisting with the Holy Ghost. So you can pray for 24 hours because it's a conversation for you. And as she was talking, the Holy Ghost says, open her heaven. And I said, in the name of Jesus, let your heaven be open. That's all I said. Seven years, no job. By 5 p.m. that same day I prayed for her, the job came. Seven years, no job. Were you in the room that day? You were there. You know, sometimes when, when you think that it is about how much you can go and sweat, you can't, you can't, you can't in any way emotionally blackmail God. The whole thing is built around the government. If you cannot obey protocol, you'll be a victim. The protocol of prayer is first about intimacy. Before any labor. Intimacy. Pastor Ono, do you know the, the voice of your wife? That's how, that's how there should be a unique, a unique knowledge of a feedback inside prayer. You, you, you must know the voice of your beloved. Because prayer is communion. It's communion. 
is communion. The way of the Pharisee prayer is about much speaking, much speaking, much speaking. Because now, now only you they talk. One day you'll be talking, they'll say, Keep quiet! Huh? Because see, you, you wake up in the morning before you even say, Thank you for life. You just say, hmm. <laughs> Somebody say, I, 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 I shake the gate of the heavens and I, 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 I put heaven under pressure until I, I say, Look at this one, look at this. <laughs> Which pressure? What can you? Some, Sometimes you need to. You need to expose yourself to certain knowledge so that you will know how infinitesimal you are. If you see where you are living, you will cry. You will cry for mercy. Zoom, zoom yourself. Step out of the earth. Eh? Zoom. You will see the earth like a small ball. First, you will see <coughs> the sun. You see Mercury. Huh? Mercury. You will see Venus. You will see Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Now, you will see that you who is in planet number three, bah? Mercury, Venus, Earth. Your planet is one of the smallest. Very small, tiny ball. Then the next beside you is so large that you, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, you don't mean anything. Then inside that small planet, eh, there is a continent. They will zoom it into it. When they zoom the continent, then they will zoom and pick a country. Then they will zoom the country and pick a state. They will zoom the state and pick a small city. Zoom the city, remove one small angwa. Zoom the angwa, remove a, a, a street. Zoom the streets, come out one house. Zoom that house, remove. Aye. One small youth are now causing trouble and, and say, I don't believe. You, that your voice, they will not hear it. Huh. I encounter Yahweh. I encounter Yahweh. On this journey, I encounter Yahweh. I encounter On this journey, Now go ahead, use the next one minute and secure, secure bounties from God. These nights, you will not live here like you came. Remember, I told you, speak to mountains, speak to mountains, don't speak to God about mountains, challenge the mountains. Oh, yeah, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Oh, yeah, dry bones. On this journey of better, I encounter. sickness hear the word of the Lord the diseases of the Egyptian shall not come near my dwelling by his stripe I was healed oh yes yeah, sickness hear the word of the Lord I encounter Yahweh Fingers of affliction, fingers of affliction, hear the word of the Lord. No weapon formed or fashioned against me shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against me, I condemn. Encounter Yahweh, I encounter Yahweh on the journey of better. 